Upon a lacal, my garden of roses. Let's read the Grassley memo together, shall we? Dear Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein and Director Ray, Attached, please find a classified memorandum related to certain communications between Christopher Steele and multiple U.S. news outlets regarding the so-called Trump dossier that Mr. Steele compiled on behalf of Fusion GPS for the Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee and also provided to the FBI. Based on the information contained therein, we are respectfully referring Mr. Steele to you for investigation of potential violations of 18 U.S.C. Section 1001 for statements the committee has reason to believe Mr. Steele made regarding his distribution of information contained within the dossier. Thank, thank you for your prompt attention to this important matter. If you have any questions, please contact Patrick Davis or Lisa DeLay, excuse me, Delisa Lay of Chairman Grassley's staff at 202-224-5225. Signed, Chuck Grassley and Lindsey Graham. As well as uh, carbon copied to Diane Feinstein, Richard Burr, Mark Warner, Devin Nunez, and Adam Schiff, all members of the intelligence gang of eights. As you know, former British intelligence officer Christopher Steele was hired by the private firm Fusion GPS in June of 2016 to gather information about links between Russia and then-presidential candidate Donald Trump. Pursuant to that business arrangement, Mr. Steele prepared a series of documents styled as intelligence reports, some of which were later compiled into a dossier and published by BuzzFeed in January of 2017. On the face of the dossier, it appears that Mr. Steele gathered much of his information from Russian government sources inside Russia. According to the law firm Perkins Coy, Mr. Steele's dossier related efforts were funded through Fusion GPS by that law firm on behalf of the Democratic National Committee and the Clinton campaign. In response to reporting by the Washington Post about Mr. Steele's relationship with the FBI relating to this partisan dossier project, the Judiciary Committee began raising a series of questions to the FBI and the Justice Department about these matters as part of the co committee's constitutional oversight responsibilities. The FBI has since provided the committee access to classified documents relevant to the FBI's relationship with Mr. Steele and whether the FBI relied on his dossier work. As explained in greater detail below, when information in those classified documents is evaluated in light of sworn statements by Mr. Steele in British litigation, it appears that either Mr. Steele lied to the FBI or the British court, or that the classified documents reviewed by the committee can contain materially false statements. In response to committee's inquiries, the chairman and ranking member received a briefing on March 15, 2017 from then director James B. Comey Jr. The briefing addressed the Russia investigation, the FBI's relationship with Mr. Steele, and the FBI's reliance on Mr. Steele's dossier in two applications it filed for surveillance under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Then, on March 17, 2017, the chairman and ranking member were provided copies of the two relevant FISA applications, which requested authority to conduct surveillance of Carter Page. Both relied heavily on Mr. Steele's dossier claims, and both applications were granted by the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Courts. In December of 2017, the chairman, ranking member, and subcommittee chairman Graham were allowed to review a total of four FISA applications relying on the dossier to seek surveillance of Mr. Carter Page, as well as numerous other FBI documents relating to Mr. Steele. And then we have an entire uh, redacted paragraph which starts with, in March 2017, briefing with then Director Comey, he stated that blank. Similarly, in June 2017, Former FBI Director Comey testified publicly before the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence that he had briefed President-elect Trump on the dossier allegations in January of 2017, which Mr. Comey described as salacious and unverified. 
When asked at the March 2017 briefing why the FBI relied on the dossier in the FISA applications absent meaningful corroboration, and in light of the highly political motives surrounding its creation, then Director Comey stated that the FBI included the dossier allegations about Carter Page in the FISA applications because Mr. Steele himself was considered reliable due to his past work with the Bureau. Indeed, documents we have reviewed showed that the FBI took important investigative steps largely based on Mr. Steele's information and relying heavily on his credibility. Specifically, on October 21st, 2016, the FBI filed its first warrant application under FISA for Carter Page. This next sentence is redacted. The bulk of the application consists of applications, allegations against Page that were disclosed to the FBI by Mr. Steele and are also outlined in the Steele dossier. The application appears to contain no additional information corroborating the dossier allegations against Mr. Page although it does cite to a news article that appears to be sourced to Mr. Steele's dossier as well. The FBI discussed the reliability of this unverified information provided by Mr. Steele in footnotes 8 and 18 of the FISA warrant application. First, the FBI noted to a very vaguely limited extent that the political origins of the dossier in footnote 8, the FBI stated that the dossier information was compiled pursuant to the direction of a law firm who had hired an identified U.S. person, now known as Glenn Simpson of Fusion GPS, and the rest of this sentence is redacted. The application failed to disclose the identities of Mr. Simpson's ultimate clients were the Clinton campaign and the DNC. The FBI stated to the FISC that based on Steele's previous reporting history with the FBI, whereby Steele provided reliable information to the FBI, the FBI believes Steele's reporting to be credible. In short, it appears the FBI relied on admittedly uncorroborated information funded by and obtained for Secretary Clinton's presidential campaign in order to conduct surveillance of an associate of the opposing presidential candidates. It did so based on Mr. Steele's personal credibility and presumably having faith in his process of obtaining the information. But there is substantial evidence suggesting that Mr. Steele materially misled the FBI about a key aspect of his dossier efforts, one of which bears on his credibility. And this next paragraph is entirely redacted. Yet the FISA applications note the existence of a news article dated September 23, 2016, which in particular contains some of the same dossier information about Mr. Page compiled by Mr. Steele and on which the FBI relied in its application. While not explicitly stated, this is presumably the article by Michael Iskoff of Yahoo News titled U.S. Intel Officials Probe Ties Between Trump Advisor and Kremlin. The first part of this sentence is redacted, but continues, the application attempts to explain away the inconsistency between Mr. Steele's, Mr. Steele's assertion to the FBI and the existence of the article, apparently to shield Mr. Steele's credibility on which it still relied for the renewal requests. The application to the FISC said, given that the information contained in the September 23rd news article generally matches the information about Page that Steele discovered doing his or her research, and the rest of this sentence is redacted. The FBI does not believe that Steele directly provided this information to the press. In footnote 9 of its January 2017 application to renew the FISA warrant for Mr. Page, the FBI again addressed Mr. Steele's credibility. At that time, the FBI noted that it had suspended its relationship with Mr. Steele in October of 2016 because of Steele's unauthorized disclosure of information to the press. The FBI relayed that Steele had been bothered by the FBI's notification to Congress in October of 2016 about the reopening of the Clinton investigation. And as a result, Steele independently and against the prior admonishment from the FBI to speak only with the FBI on this matter, released the reporting discussed herein, dossier allegations against Page, 
to an identified news organization. However, the FBI continued to cite Mr. Steele's past work as evidence of his reliability and stated that the incident had led the FBI suspending its relationship with Mr. Steele occurred after Mr. Steele provided the FBI with the dossier information described in the application. The FBI further asserted in footnote 19 that it did not believe that Steele directly gave the information to Yahoo News that published the September 23rd news article. So, as documented in the FISA renewals, the FBI still seemed to believe Mr. Steele's earlier claim that he had only provided the dossier information to the FBI and Fusion GPS, and not to the media, prior to his October media contact that resulted in the FBI suspending the relationship. Accordingly, the FBI still deemed the information he provided prior to the October disclosure to be reliable. After all, the FBI already believed Mr. Steele was reliable. He had previously told the FBI he had not shared the information with the press. And lying to the FBI is a crime. In defending Mr. Steele's credibility to the FISC, the FBI had po posited an innocuous explanation for the September 23rd article, based on the assumption that Mr. Steele had told the FBI the truth about his press contacts. The FBI then vouched for him twice more using the same rationale in subsequent renewal applications filed with the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court in April and June of 2017. However, public reports, court filings, and information obtained by the committee during witness interviews in the course of its ongoing investigation indicate that Mr. Steele not only provided dossier information to the FBI, but also to numerous media organizations prior to the end of his relationship with the FBI in October 2016. In Steele's sworn court filings and litigation in London, he admitted that he gave off the record briefings to a number of journalists about the pre-election memoranda, i.e. the dossier, in late summer and autumn of 2016. In another sworn filing in that case, Mr. Steele further stated that journalists from The New York Times, The Washington Post, Yahoo News, The New Yorker, and CNN were briefed at the end of September 2016 by him and Fusion G at Fusion GPS's destruct instruction. The filing further states that Mr. Steele subsequently participated in further meetings at Fusion's instruction with Fusion and the New York Times, the Washington Post, and Yahoo News, which took place mid-October 2016. According to these court filings, the briefings involved the disclosure of limited intelligence regarding indications of Russian interference in the U.S. election, U.S. election process, and the possible coordination of members of Trump's campaign team and Russian government officials. In his interview with the committee, Glenn Simpson of Fusion GPS confirmed this account by Mr. Steele and his company as filed in the British courts. The first of these filings was publicly reported in the U.S. media in April of 2017, yet the FBI did not subsequently disclose that the FISC, this evidence to the FISC, this evidence suggesting that Mr. Steele had lied to the FBI. Instead, the application still relied primarily on his credibility prior to the October media incidents. The FBI received similar information from a Justice Department official, Bruce Orr, who maintained contact with Mr. Simpson and Mr. Steele about their dossier work, and whose wife also worked for Fusion GPS on the Russia project. Many sentences are redacted from this point. He also noted in the same interview, referencing an interview not mentioned in unredacted data, meaning that there is an interview mentioned in the redacted area of this paragraph, that Mr. Steele was desperate to see that Mr. Trump was not elected president. None of the information provided by Mr. Orr in his interviews with the FBI was included in the FISA renewal applications, despite its relevance to whether Mr. Steele had lied to the FBI about his contacts with the media, as well as its broader relevance to his credibility and his stated political motive. 
Whether Mr. Steele lied to the FBI about his media contacts is relevant for at least two reasons. First, it is relevant to his credibility as a source, particularly given the lack of corroboration for his claims, at least at the time they were included in the FISA applications. Second, it is relevant to the reliability of his information gathering efforts. Mr. Steele conducted his work for Fusion GPS, compiling the pre-election memoranda between June and early November of 2016. In the British litigation, Mr. Steele acknowledged briefing journalists about the dossier memoranda in late summer autumn of 2016. Unsurprisingly, during the summer of 2016, reports of at least some of the dossier allegations began circulating among reporters and people involved in Russian issues. Mr. Steele also admitted in the British litigation to briefing journalists from the Washington Post, Yahoo News, the, the New Yorker, and CNN in September of 2016. Simply put, the more people who contemporarily, contemporaneously knew that Mr. Steele was compiling his dossier, the more likely it was to, vulnerable to manipulation. In fact, in the British litigation, which involves a post-election dossier memorandum, Mr. Steele admitted that he had received and included it in it unsolicited and unverified allegations. That filing implies that he similarly received unsolicited intelligence on these matters prior to the election as well, stating that Mr. Steele continued to receive unsolicited intelligence on the matters covered by the pre-election memoranda after the U.S. presidential election. And the following paragraph is redacted. <sighs> One memorandum by Mr. Steele that was not published by BuzzFeed is dated October 19th, 2016. The report alleges something that is redacted, as well as something else that is redacted. Mr. Steele's memorandum states that his company received this report from blank U.S. State Department, that the report was the second in a series, and that the report was information that came from a foreign subsource who is in touch with redacted, a contact of redacted, a friend of the Clintons who passed it to redacted. It is troubling enough that the Clinton campaign funded Mr. Steele's work, but these, that these Clinton associates were contemporaneously feeding Mr. Steele allegations raises additional concerns about his credibility. Simply put, Mr. Steele told the FBI he had not shared the Carter Page dossier information beyond his client and the FBI. The department reported the claim to the FISC. Yet Mr. Steele acknowledged in sworn filings that he did debrief Yahoo News and other media organizations about the dossier around the time of the publication of the Yahoo News article that seems to be based on the dossier. On September 23, 2016, Yahoo News published its article entitled U.S. Intel Officials Probe Ties Between Trump Advisor and Kremlin. That article described claims about meetings between Carter Page and Russians, including Igor Sechin. Mr. Sechin is described in the article as a longtime Putin associate and former Russian deputy prime minister, under sanction by the Te Treasury Department in response to Russia's actions in the Ukraine. The article attributes the information to a well-placed Western intelligence source who reportedly said that at their alleged meeting, Sechin raised the issue of the lifting of sanctions with Page. This information also appears in multiple memoranda that make up the dossier. In sum, around the same time Yahoo News published its article containing dossier information about Carter Page, Mr. Steele and Fusion GPS had briefed Yahoo News and other news outlets about the information contained in the dossier. These facts appear to directly contradict the FBI's assertions in its initial application for the FISA page warrant, as well as subsequent renewal applications. The FBI repeatedly represented to the court that Mr. Steele told the FBI he did not have unauthorized contacts with the press about the dossier prior to October 2016. The FISA applications make these claims specifically in the context of the September 2016 Yahoo News article. But Mr. Steele has admitted publicly before a court of law that he did have such contacts with the press at the time, and his former business partner, Mr. Simpson, had confirmed it to the committee. 
Thus, the FISA applications are either materially false in claiming that Mr. Steele said he did not provide dossier information to the press prior to October 2016, or Mr. Steele made materially false statements to the FBI when he claimed he only provided dossier information to his business partner and the FBI. In this case, Mr. Steele's apparent deception seems to have posed significant material consequences on the FBI's investigative decisions and representations to the court. Mr. Steele's information formed a significant portion of the FBI's warrant application, and the FISA application relied more heavily on Steele's credibility than on any independent verification or corroboration for his claims. Thus, the basis for the warrant authorizing surveillance on U.S. citizens rests largely on Mr. Steele's credibility. The Department of Justice has a responsibility to determine whether Mr. Steele provided false information to the FBI and whether the FBI's representations to the court were in error. Accordingly, we are referring Christopher Steele to the Department of Justice for investigation of potential violations of 18 U.S.C. Section 1001. And if you're curious about what the redactions in this article might entail, I recommend watching my previous video from today, in which I discussed the fact that Carter Page wasn't a Russian spy, or even close to a Russian spy. He was an FBI asset. He was an undercover employee for the FBI. Thank you for listening, and I will, <clears throat> I will catch you next time after my voice fucking heals. Mwah.